Just before the video starts, I did just want to congratulate Jennifer Lawrence on becoming the first female actor to ever star in a movie. Uh, congratulations, Jennifer. You, you really are an inspiration to all of us. I remember when I was doing Hunger Games, nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie yeah. because mm -hmm. it wouldn't work. So very brave, so very bold, oh, Jennifer, you inspire all of us. But back to the main point of the video, we are today, unfortunately, once again, venturing into the world of Willow, or fortunately depending on your outlook, because come on, let's be realistic, you guys don't come here for highbrow critical conversation, do you? No, we're here for a good old-fashioned hate watch. Nothing wrong with that. If you can't laugh with something, you might as well laugh at it. Or at the very least, you can laugh at me and the fact that I have nothing better to do with my life and the fact that I'm a 26-year-old guy with uh, Minecraft betting. <laughs> I was a bit real, but uh, <laughs> should we get started? The rightful king of Chimeria rode out of the city gates to meet his tyrant brother. And it kicks off with Princess Pinterest, everyone's not favourite character. And it would appear that she's coming for Galadriel's crown as the most disliked character in a TV show. Will she beat her? <laughs> of course not, but it'll be close. And 2,000 death dealers. And this is really fascinating. Uh, I can tell they don't call you Boar Man for nothing. Literally her first line in the show and she's already being a pretentious penis. I sit here sometimes and I think, do you know what, maybe, maybe the writers are doing this on purpose. They're purposely writing her as arrogant and dislikable because at some point in the show, she's going to be humbled, she'll have to face who she is, and she'll go through some sort of character development. There'll be some sort of arc for her. But we're, you know, we're two hours in and we're still kind of waiting for this to happen. So for now, she's still just a dick. You can't tell me that up until this point, the writers want me to like this character. There's, there's no way. Could you just tell me about my father? Well, I'm trying to, but you keep... Okay, well, can you make it short? He's literally doing what you asked him to. There is no need to be like that. It's not, it's not even like it's, they're doing it for comic effect because it's not even funny. There's no joke there. So, uh, Hollywood writers will make you rethink what you know to be comedy. You thought comedy was supposed to be funny? <laughs> What's wrong with, what are you, stupid? Anyway, the gang then realises that Elora is missing, and of course, Captain Pinterest has something to say. Where's Elora? Seriously? Throw a leash on that shit already. Then, when no one laughs at that hilarious quip, all of a sudden she changes her tone and decides that she's now going to be the leader of the search party. Spread out. She could've gone far. I mean, yeah! You know, we clearly saw at the end of the last episode that she was captured at night. It's now the morning. It's been, I don't know what, eight hours at least? How far could you have got? I'd also like to point out that at this point, all of these characters are somewhat aware of Elora and her significance with the, within the world, and none of them seem to care that she's missing. They're just kind of like, ah, yeah, go on then, I guess we'll go look for her. searching for the best part of 10 seconds and the little guy's already like I don't know <laughs> they just don't care do they then Captain Pinterest stumbles across the bush that Elora magicked up at the end of the last episode and then says something completely inaudible I'm not joking I have replayed this clip I don't know how many times and I can't for the life of me tell what it is that she's saying you try and work it out um that's really what um that's really ah Nat Skrilly Then we find out that Crimson Jesus might actually be Jesus, as she pops up whenever the plot needs her to. She catches up with the guy who captured Elora. We saw at the end of the last episode that he captured her at night. He's then slung her over his shoulder and has been walking all night. They've shown us this in this episode as it's now day and he's still walking and Crimson Jesus, who has been walking for the best part of two minutes, has already caught up with them. And look how slow she is walking. How did she catch up with anybody? Stop. You violated the law. Pay the court a fine or serve your sentence. Hold on. Someone just concisely recap everything I missed. Allow me. Well, you've all managed to catch up with someone who was multiple hours ahead of you by walking for a minute. Uh, there's a ginger girl who looks like she's about to cry because she might actually have to do her job. 
Uh, there's a very irritating young man. Uh, there's two very small men, one of which, wielding what I can only assume, is a very small knife. And that's about it, really. Will that do it? We good? Okay. So then the gang realises that the knight who has been turned evil uh, isn't quite in his right mind, so they kind of circle him uh, and gang up on him. And it would appear then that the theme of today's episode is people catching up with people that you wouldn't think it would be possible for them to catch up with. As then, a bunch of knights, decked in full suits of armour, manage to sneak up on them in the middle of an open wood when they're all stood in a circle, bearing in mind, so they can all see behind each other's backs, they manage to sneak up on them, unseen and unheard. I swear I am putting more thought into these scenes than the people who made the show. Why do I even bother? Was that a 360? Okay, I get it. You, you gotta make the choreography look all fancy and it's gotta be nice to look at. But if I'm being pedantic, I don't know how useful a pirouette is mid-sword fight, but it looks ridiculous. And this whole time, Willow has been sat at one side doing absolutely shit all to help anyone, and then about five minutes into the fight, suddenly decides that he's gonna throw a smoke bomb at everyone. Not just like towards the enemy's general direction, everyone. You might think, hey, won't that hinder both the good guys and the bad guys, making it just as difficult for everyone to fight? Yeah. But the only reason he threw the smoke bomb is because they needed to progress the plot. There is no other reason for him to have done this other than the writers couldn't come up with a better way of transitioning to the next part of the story. I got her. Can you track one? What? This editing is bonkers. It just traveled at Mach 3. He threw the smoke bomb at everyone, and all of the villains managed to magically escape with Elora once again. This is turning into an episode of Dora the Explorer. Can you say, estupido? If we catch them by sundown, we can get her back. Oh, well, don't worry. Just do what you did at the end of the last episode. Go to sleep for, you know, eight plus hours. Get up. Walk for about half a minute and you'll catch them in no time. It worked the last time. And then the weird ass dialogue continues in this episode as well. So Captain Pinterest asks about, you know, what's the deal with the possessed knight? Like what's, what's going on with him? What, what, what's up with that? And then the emasculated prince then begins to answer the question. Nothing wrong with that. But for, for no reason at all, Willow then begins to scold him for telling her the answer gets up on his high horse, says, I'm actually the one who knows everything, then proceeds not to explain anything at all and just says, let's go. Bad magic is corrosive. It eats away at you until there's nothing left. I'm sorry, Graydon. When did you become High Aldwin? I know, that's right, you're not. I am. Let's move out. Why is everyone in this show a dick? I, the, the prince guy, is he, he's just there to be a fool guy, isn't he? Like that's the only reason they wrote his character into the show. They wanted a guy who was a point of authority. He's a prince, but they wanted to put him down. They, want, they wanted, like, you know, they wanted an authoritative male character that can be there just for all the other characters to put down whenever they feel like it. It, it feels like these shows are being written by bitter toddlers. I don't know what hurt you people, but go and find a new job. Or at the very least, seek some therapy whatever it is that troubles you. Our entertainment is suffering because of your childhood. And then, one of the most unintentionally funny scenes in this episode, Willow, in a moment of urgency, says, there is not a moment to waste. We must go right now. He then <laughs> begins to walk off very slowly. <laughs> no one listens to him. Come on, there's not a moment to lose. Then followed by one of the most unintentionally funny special effects. They're turning in a... <laughs> <laughs> that lightning! <laughs> there's, literally, there's, like, there's literally someone stood off screen going like this. <laughs> They're turning in a... Look, I'm no lighting expert, but even I can tell going off the shadows on their faces that their light is coming from like horizontal to them. So there, there, <laughs> there really is just someone just off screen with a light going boop. Boop. They get my groin. Don't say groin in mixed company. What does mixed company mean? 
Does that mean you can't say groin in front of women or little people? And if and if so, which one shouldn't be listening to the word groin? Haven't those haven't you guys just been in like a sword fight fighting for your lives? But the word groin, ah, oh, you, you can't be listening to that. Uh, Willow has some very weird priorities. So we've just cut back from the scene with Crimson Jesus and Captain Pinterest back to everyone else. Now we're not privy to whatever's been going on uh, in this scene. But when we cut back, Borman is on the floor, out of breath, and the emasculated prince has pulled his groin. Hey, look, I don't know what's been going on, but it would appear that, uh, you know, the prince isn't too happy with Borman's technique. What are you all lying around for? You need to be moving. Oh. And now we're back with Alora, who has escaped the custody of the evil knights, and she bumps into two women who look like they shop exclusively at Home Depot. I'm Hubert, and uh, what may we ask is your appellation? Now, I saw a couple of people mention this in the, uh, in the comments for the second episode, you know, with the flashback with Willow. Uh, and it was the fact that he was wearing a denim shirt. And do you know what? I've got a side with the comments here. Why are these characters wearing denim? We're, we're dealing with fantasy here. Why is she wearing a pair of 501s? So if any wicked men think they're going to come here and disturb our repast, they're not going to be so wicked when me and Anna finish with them. Oh, if you get my meaning. Is this what female empowerment looks like these days? A woman with a cockney accent wearing double denim and a trilby. <laughs> what a time to be alive. So then, desperate Dan swings her axe into the back of the evil night guy and then stands there, perfectly still, just kind of just chilling with her axe, smiling at everyone, long enough so that she might be stabbed back. So she's dead now. No! Woman power. Uh, and then the other two, Elora and this other denim-wearing stranger, then run off really slowly. Why are you running? And once again, I find myself agreeing with the comments. And this is the idea that they're using modern vernacular. And sure, I mean, this, this, this might be doable. You might be able to make this work, but you have to really lean into it. I think, so then it, it comes across as like intentional, but because you just throw in the odd word here and there, it just sounds like lazy writing that they've not thought about, and it really does detract from the idea of fantasy. This wagon sucks. Oh, I hate it. This wagon sucks. Can you imagine if they'd done this in other fantasy? Mr. Frodo's bossing it down sexual style. Goated with the sauce he is. Would have killed the vibe a little bit. You know what I mean? There is this. Thing that is looking at me in a not friendly way. What is that? No, for real. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> they stole that from a Wallace and Gromit set. What? <laughs> What is that? Then the little guy dies, which is a shame because I did actually quite like that character. It was just, he was just bonkers uh, and used a lot of English colloquialism. So, uh, you know, he was quite, uh, but we, we then find out that Willow had the power to defeat all of the bad guys from the beginning. He just didn't. So, you know, I mean, you could have saved your best friend's life, but it, at least the action scene was a bit more dramatic. Then for the sake of continuity, this episode has to end, of course, like the others in a very cringy and puzzling way and what better way to do that than to have Willow deliver a not very dramatic line, walk off uh, and then st start playing a cover of Enter Sandman. <laughs> I'm not joking. I don't even know where I'm in the middle of. I do. Oh, of course, it's it's a uh, it's a female cover of the song as well. Wonderful. Uh, now, just before we wrap up, I couldn't help but notice that our good friend Desperu has also been covering the Willow series. So, you know, I just wanted to quickly check in uh, and get his quick thoughts on the show. Hey, Desperu, how you doing, mate? All right, Johnny, what can I do for you? Well, I was just wondering if you could give me and the lovely people at home uh, your quick thoughts on episode three. Oh, I thought it was absolutely amazing. When I think of Willow, it's like Shakespeare, but more intelligent. I especially liked how three people going off in three different directions end up at the same place at the same time. And if they hadn't, everyone would have died. It's the kind of quality writing you only get at Disney, or Amazon, or Hollywood in general, I guess. Either way, it was amazing. Cheers. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for watching. You better like and subscribe.
you bitch. And if you're in the market for a lovely chair like mine, you can use my affiliate link down below and you'll be helping me out too. See you soon, guys. And of course, a big shout out to my top tier members, Pozzabon, Flunky, Jax, and Brennus. The uh, amount you guys support me is a little bit crazy. It really is. Uh, so this is a personal invite to all four of you. Uh, if you want to pop up to me on Patreon, if there is anything I can do for you guys, just let me know and uh, I'll see if we can work something out over there. So yeah, make sure to go drop me a message. And of course, a big thank you to the tier two members as well. Steve the Goat, Dr. Melski, Saeed, MG Virgil, Kuno Sacco, Mark Maiden, Sensei Fang, Hadziu, Michael Terpia, and Yarn Witch. And of course, a big shout out to the tier one members and the tier one patrons as well. Uh, I do want to say that obviously I know that at this time of year, particularly during the winter, uh, and uh, particularly around the Christmas period, uh, money can be a little more tight than usual. If that is the case for you, please, please, please do keep your money for yourself. Um, you know, uh, I will still be here. I will, you know, still be making uh, videos. Do not feel pressured uh, to to remain during this season. I hadn't really thought about it up until this point, but uh, yeah, uh, if 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 that does apply to you guys, please, please don't worry about that. Okay. Take care of yourself, guys. And there we go, another day, another video. Will you join me for my next one? You better do, you bitch. But until then, make sure you take care of yourselves, guys. And I'll see you all very soon.